Alright, today I'm doing another gameplay video, except the gameplay is going to be very not exciting. Uh, <laughs> I am just going to go through the uh, Splicer Gauntlet for the season and the Umbral upgrades from it. Uh, in a way, I am going to try and talk about kind of my thought process behind uh, what I have been grinding for that. And this is not how you get to the Gauntlet, is it? It is in the quest screen. <laughs> some reason I thought it was the artifact. Um, as you can see, I have been um, unlocking all the upgrades to a certain extent, and now I am realizing that in order to see the individual upgrades, I need to actually go down here to our friend, the uh, Mithrax Servitor. So I wrote an article about this uh, right when it launched, and while my opinions are mostly the same now, uh, I just kind of wanted to go through my thought process now that I have run roughly 80 bazillion uh, override missions and... Uh, yeah, I feel a little differently about maybe the original order I did here, so I just thought I would go through it. Um, without question, the most important column here is override efficiency. And it was a little hard to know this right at the start. So it says override ch chests have increased rewards, standard vex chests can now drop seasonal gear, this almost never happens, uh, even at max upgrades. Conflicts chests now have a drop chance to drop umbral engrams and can drop up to one focus umbral engram a week. So that all doesn't sound like amazing, like off the top of your head, because um, who, you know, everybody has too many umbral engrams as it is. Uh, and then the standard Vex chest barely ever drops seasonal gear. So that's just not really worth it, even at max level. But override chests have increased rewards is the important part of this. And it doesn't really spell it out for you. Uh, what happens is that it gets an increased amount of decrypted data every run. So you start and uh, I think... I don't know what baseline is, but like I think after the first upgrade, it goes from maybe 25 to 35. I think this is the first thing I even bought, so I don't know if I was ever doing 25. So this is 35, and then it goes to 45, and then it goes to 55. So you're getting 55 decrypted data per thing uh, if you don't spawn the magic loot goblin that uh, allegedly has no uh, actual way to trigger him, and he's just random. So this is the most important thing to go after at first, even if it's uh, what is it, 500 plus 300 plus 100, 900 total data. It's, it's a lot, obviously, but if you build this off as a baseline, you will have enough to um, get indefinite data, You know, get an increased rate for the entire future, so you will benefit the most if you invest in this first. Um, I do recommend memory expansion just because your limits at first are really low and you're going to kind of be wasting your time if you keep hitting the cap on these. If you hear uh, squeaking in the background, guess who that is? It's Evie and her friend, the bunny. Um, and But you don't need to go super deep into this if you are playing override frequently and, and using enough of these uh, keys uh, often. You Remember, you can also, where is the screen? <laughs> uh, you can also build keys like as a stockpile, so if, you, or if you're maxed on, on Ether, make sure to uh, get all your keys maxed out. I'm at clear max right now, but um, so you will, so you're not getting like uh, overflow Ether. And I'm getting so confused with all these menus, I'm sorry. <laughs> Back to the gauntlet upgrades. Um, so you will, yeah, so this is one I would upgrade maybe one or two levels at first and you can save later ones for later. Um, Ether filter, I didn't think was going to be that valuable at first, but is, is one of the, once I found I wanted to farm kind of override over and over again, you will find out that you run out of ether, so it is nice to get this upgraded all the way because you will start getting kind of uh, ether more often. You will get it in like clusters of two sometimes, and it just it it really benefits you uh, if you're unless you're just straight up running like a playlist activity over and over again, where that's probably the most reliable source. Uh, I do uh, recommend this. I didn't have this in my initial thing. It is, this is kind of a weird section where this is the thing where if you go to the little interacting thing in the gauntlet part of this, um, not this gauntlet, the gauntlet that you kind of run uh, after the moat part of the mission, you will spawn these little platforms that make you skip all of the uh, electric <laughs> spinny things for the most part, or at least a good chunk of them. Uh, and I just, I found this useful because... I really don't enjoy running those parts. So for 100 decrypted data, yeah, that's probably worth it. Um, and even though th that section's weird because it only takes one person to get through and then like using this and then sitting there and wait for the platforms to spawn, usually someone is like already ahead of me and like are gonna finish before me anyway. So it's not really worth it. Uh, another good upgrade is the um, heavy upgrades. I, I do recommend a couple levels of this where 
One of the reason that override goes so fast is because everyone has so much access to heavy ammo and this these upgrades only increase that. So if you are trying to go for something like the uh, umbral engrams for machine gun kills or sword kills, uh, this will really help with that um, because you will just get so much ammo from this. I don't know if this one, I haven't done this yet. Uh, I don't know if that's uh, max ammo, like if you just always max if you do this, um, but it's probably pretty close to it because this one is already like, you're getting like 40, 45 sword ammo, something like that. Um, these ones, the, uh, the laser walls and defenses deal less damage. I don't think these are useful. Like, again, like I said, like the platforms will let you skip like either all or most of the, the laser traps. So I don't think this is worth like 500, 300 data. Um, obviously you're going to have to upgrade all this stuff eventually if you want like the season triumph or whatever, but I just don't find this very useful. Uh, you will notice that I have 810 decrypted data that I am not spending on things I could. The reason being is I am waiting to see uh, what these are and if any of these are unlocked this week at reset. Uh, I assume these two are going to have something to do with this section because it's under this platform section. So maybe uh, there's some other thing that happens for the boss room or for the gauntlet part, uh, something like that. So I'm gonna see what those are. These, I think they might have something to do with the weekly uh, pinnacle quest. I'm not 100% sure on that. Like something about how runs of that will get you something or something. I It's probably in the API. I just haven't really looked. But so these may not open until that opens uh, or I could just be totally wrong about that. Um, in terms of other things that you may or may not want to focus on, so I've had a couple of people ask me about this. Uh, this is related to the gauntlet, so I'm not totally going off topic here. Um, so the way you unlock more umbral engrams in the thing is there is a section, so in Season of the Splicer, you go here and you get a prismatic lenses. These are all the ones that are like, get X amount of final blows with whatever weapon or get enough ether, or get grenade kills, all this stuff. As you can see, I have done almost all of them. Uh, so this, these are kind of the ways that you when you have to like click on the triumph to unlock the umbral engrams for them. And uh, these will unlock various ways to focus things. Uh, I'm really excited to for this engram because you can focus, there's only three swords in here and one of them is always going to be your class sword. And the new class swords are pretty awesome. Uh, all of them are. So I'm, I'm excited to go for these. I'm not, I am not focusing any umbrals until I finish uh, at least the, the vast majority of the gauntlet, so that's why I'm not doing that yet. You can focus all the future work halt um, things here, and then you can go into specific ones for close range future work halt. Uh, these these two especially are really good. Uh, I've heard people like the rapid fire DSI too, um, but you can get really good vision and really good stochastic variable rolls. Uh, I am I using one right now? No, I'm not. Um, this is the one I use on my warlock, which is the wellspring surplus, but I'm also looking for a Feeding Frenzy uh, Rampage. No, Feeding Frenzy multi kill clip. That's another good one. And don't ask about Merciless. It's a long story. <laughs> um, some of these are not worth it. Uh, so this is the one where you got, uh, you did uh, 50 Lost Sectors. So that lets you focus Cartesian Coordinate and Retro Futurist, and that's it. Um, I know people, some people like Cartesian Coordinate. It is pretty good. I do kind of like it, uh, but if you're not excited about either of these two, maybe you don't need to do 50 Lost Sectors. Uh, and then this is the um, 50, what is it? The 50 uh, Bounty one. And this is this is pretty much just all of the Whirlpool, uh, the new Whirlpool weapons, uh, which is not amazing. And then this one is Eternal Blazon and Tarantula. So if you want Eternal Blazon, maybe this one's worth it because I know people like Eternal Blazon, but uh, Tarantula sucks. Sorry, Tarantula, even with the buffs, they are much better than your fusions than that. And then these are the tier three focusing for armor. Um, I do not, okay, so I am going to do one of these live right now just to see what the role is because I do not know uh, if they have improved these to get them to actually have high stats or if they're still gonna be kind of trash like they were uh, last time and you only get three a week so they better be worth it. So here we go, let's do it. Let's see what we get here. Lightkin robes. Okay, 63. So the minimum is still, I think it's 15 per stat. Uh, no intellect, not great, but that's not terrible all around, and a 63 is not bad. Uh, in theory, I would have to do kind of a bunch of these to see what the average is, but that's a promising start, I guess. Uh, so we can see, you know, once, we, once everyone kind of does more of those, we can see if it's actually going to be worth it or not. Uh, but for now, I'm going to save the rest of my um, materials for reset tomorrow. And if nothing changes, I will buy those upgrades that I don't really care about and then probably just start focusing things. 
because the uh, new moon override mission launches, so I will run that a bunch of times. Wait, is there actually something going on here? Or is this just, I oh, know, this is still hammer stuff. All right, I didn't know <laughs> if this was said anything new. I hadn't seen that symbol pop up. Uh, and here we are in the, the uh, bridge of our, our spaceship that is not a spaceship, but is probably a spaceship. So anyways, uh, that's what I am, have been doing for uh, focusing on things. I might do another thing on the artifact at some point. Um, I've screwed this up a little bit. I am still so mad that they don't let you reset this without Glimmer and the fact that you can't just unlock everything because it makes no sense that you can't because you have things like a nine energy class item thing that you cannot use with anything else. So I don't know what the problem is for letting us unlock everything. Anyways, that's a spinoff rant and I'll get into that a different time. But yep, that's my thoughts on the gauntlet and the engrams and stuff. And we will see if anything changes tomorrow at reset. Uh, otherwise, I will be doing the new override and then playing a lot of Iron Banner for all the new weapons it has. Um, hopefully that all of them are going to be live during the first session here, and I guess we'll see. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.